Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press and as usual, we will take you through the pages of our national dailies and also have a guest join the conversation. Upuna Bonkutaria is on standby. It's good to have you join us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Messi. Happy New Year, Osa. Happy New Year, Nigeria. Great to have you Happy on the program. <laughs> All right, then let's, uh, you know, start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And uh, we'll be looking at the top stories on the Daily Independent. The banner caption for the Daily Independent doesn't really sound very great for 2022. Job loss eminent as banks may face measures, acquisitions. Uh, that's what you find. 2022 will be a season of consolidation. Songwo Lu assures Lagosians. I will stand by Governor Tom for his principal position. Wike, uh, that's the governor of River State. Wike, a pillar of support and a sunshine star. Uh, you also have Otom quoted and all of that on the daily independent newspaper. Uh, away from that, terrorist mountain roadblocks amounts to two sovereignties in Nigeria. MBF is quoted on that. Insecurity, probe alleged misuse of security votes by governors. Sarah tells Buhari, and also you have Buhari's non-supervision of military activities affecting insurgency results, and uh, Lagos police debunk alleged shutting down of estates by the commission of police. I mean, we talked about that just some minutes back, and fire gods near we market. This is some of the headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper. All right, so the Punch newspapers next. Budget. National Assembly faults Buhari, insists on 6,576 extra projects. National Assembly has power to drop and amend budget proposals, says House spokesman. Lawmakers have no rights to introduce projects. It's an anomaly, says Ishe Shage. And also, um, the Senate did respond, saying Shage did not speak from a position of law but lack of understanding. Also on the punch, Nigeria's inflation rate may be among the world's highest in 2022, and that's from the World Bank. Uh, Wike visits Ipeazu, Bauchi governor, attacks Buhari, alleges anti-graft fight, lopsided. Buhari, eminent Nigerians mourn Olubadon, Balugun, uh, to Mount Throne. And uh, we can also find on the uh, punch this morning, police... Um, 178,459 firearms unaccounted for. 3.22 billion naira paid to ghost workers, says the Auditor General of the Federation. And the federal government owes five IOCs, 1.15 billion naira, a billion dollars uh, cash uh, call arrears. Uh, we can also find on the punch this morning, food crisis to worsen as bandits kill and kidnap 352 farmers in 12 months. Two Kaduna Baptist School students released after 189 days with bandits. Bandits raid Kaduna local government's highway Q8, abduct 20 women, steal motorcycles. And uh, Mbaka claims anonymous DSS inv invitation, six prayers from congregation. Uh, these are the major stories on the Punch newspapers. Away from the Punch newspaper, uh, let's also look at the Nigerian Tribune. And uh, the caption reads... Presidency, why Buhari signed 2022 budget despite insertion of 6,573 new schemes. Uh, that's the bold caption you have there. And special report, is Nigeria ready for global energy transition by 2025? Uh, 2022 will be a season of consolidation. Son Wolu assures Legosian as, uh, Legosians as he talks about uh, the complete of the red, blue line rail project. Immortal Rise Mill and start the fourth mainland bridge. Uh, this is some of the uh, riders underneath the bold caption. Ibadan stands still as the 41st Olu Ibadan Oba Saliu Adetunji is buried. Buhari, Makinde, Atiko, Tunubu, governors, Obas, Emirs, and others mourn markets to be short today. Fear Prize, new taxes among economic issues to shape 2022. Uh, COVID-19, governors, ministers get mandatory rapid tests before meeting President Muhammad Buhari. And that's also another caption. We're tired of being on the same salary structure for 12 years. Absu tells federal government. 
We're just hoping that we don't, you know, experience another strike. ASU has no justification for strike. That's what the federal government is saying. Electricity consumers paid 561 billion naira to discos in 11 months. That's according to a report. And why Darwin College House Master orders were released, Lagos uh, Commissioner Police is quoted and awaits result of toxicology tests. Mm. Bandits kill seven and kidnap 18 in Kaduna. This is some of the headlines on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. And now uh, to the nation newspapers. The big one there, of course, is in Ibadan. It says Ibadan mourns, Ulubadan dies and is buried. Bari, governors, Tinubu, others pay tributes. Balugun to ascend throne. Also on the nation, bandits kill seven in Kaduna communities. Senate probes PPPRA's 200 million naira to foreign firms. COVID-19 tests for state house visitors. New rules of, uh, at the presidency. And also 2023 polls, Jonathan meets coordinators. Buhari states fighting lost battle on $418 million Paris club cash. And then NIMET alerts airline operators to poor visibility in eight states. Uh, I think these are the stories that we can uh, share on The Nation this morning. Good morning once again to Opunabo Inkotaria. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, let's go ahead. You know, which of the stories would you like to start from? Anyone, just, just pick anyone. Okay, let, let's start with the uh, one of them that uh, Mercy did share, um, the one on on um, security votes by governors, and of course, uh, uh, a call to probe security votes and misuse of security votes by state governors. Well, I was been a very strong advocate of that because um, most of these governors probably get the security votes, so it's not accounted for which is extremely wrong. And uh, a lot of them have paid as much as 5 billion to 10 billion naira monthly for security votes. This to me is incongruous. It's completely unacceptable. I think there should be a benchmark. There should be a fixed amount for security votes. And at the end of the day, at the end of the month, or at the end of the year, or at the end of the governor's tenure, president's tenure, he gives an account of how much is being spent. Because that is a conduit by, <coughs> excuse me, for most governors and presidents. In lots of them, that is how they steal the money. If you don't even know how much is being put in for security. You don't even know how much is being spent at the end of the month. And so it is used by governors and presidents as a conduit by. I strongly believe that they should say for governors, depending on the state, they should say for governors, you should not exceed Two billion. We should not exceed three billion. If there is need for you to exceed, your national, your state council assembly will approve. And at the end of the month, just as you're going to investigate monthly allocations, you can also investigate the security group. And I agree. Some of them will come up with an argument that you, in the terms of security, is not all about the physical. It's not all about what you see because you pay for information. For example, now you might have somebody who serves as secret agent that you pay monthly, and you cannot disclose the number of persons, you can because their identities might not be disclosed and should not even be disclosed for security reasons. So you pay them money without you understand all those technicalities. But then it is being abused. So let us say, okay, we are not in, we are not interested in the person, the identities of who you gave the money. We are not interested, but we want to know. You said you have ten five billion, not a single five billion a month. Because some governors take as much as 10 billion naira, not exceeding 3 billion naira a month. If you are not going to disclose, and you cannot even properly account for it, to a very large extent, it's going to reduce the amount that is being stolen in the name of security. So, first, let us start by begging it. And also, okay, Labour State, not more than 2 billion. Labour State, not more than 3 billion. But then, at the end of the day, the House of Assembly, even though I call the Ministry of uh, Lawmaking, because most of them are rubber stamp assembly. So even though the House of Assembly will eventually uh, approve more money, depending on the security situation in the state, then fine. Then at the end of the day, the governor should account for, because you cannot tell me 10 billion naira, you spend 10 billion naira on security in a month in the state that is fixed. So. How do you explain it? No and this money should be, even the DSS, the DSS will not even account. And this is a conduit by, it's a very silent way of stealing, very silent way of stealing. 
Because Mr. we are not credible. They are not credible. Mr. Yes, but here they are not credible. Yes. If if the security apparatus across the country is controlled by the federal, the state doesn't have state police or anything, then what does the governor spend even one billion naira on monthly? What spy agents? Just, what equipment you, is he buying? You just, asked, you just asked the right question. That's the point I'm making. You just asked the right question. The reasonableness in that is what I'm questioning. So how can you now? Because most governors will tell you they spend ten billion naira. Some will tell you they spend five billion naira. But you can see that the governor will buy maybe twenty cars for uh, the police. The twenty cars will amount to maximum, let's say, hundred billion naira. I call it to the hundred million. And because it's not accounted for, and most times it's not being taken from the security boat, let's say that. It's a provider surface. Even if you're buying, even if he's buying cars, he doesn't buy cars every month. It's the governor's money. So that's what I'm saying. I'm just the security boat is being used, is seen by the governors as their own personal money. It's like a pocket money to them every month. So it is being abused. We can stop security boat if that is the case. Use your allocation. I think the best thing, in fact, is top security goals. Use the allocation so that you can always account for it. If you, the state gets 10 billion naira every month, 10, 5 billion naira every month, just ask. You are prepared for other issues like health and so on. You can also, don't bother about security goals. Because it is used as a conduit by both of our government. They see it as a pocket money, monthly pocket money. And that's why in most cases it is extremely huge. 10 billion naira, 5 billion naira security boat. For what? It's not, it's not, it's not right. So I completely agree. Because if you say you're going to prove, I can tell you, there might be an excuse by most of these governors. They'll tell you, uh, our informants, and the informants are not, you are not, they are not supposed to be known. So they'll tell you, our informants, we pay X amount to get information. It's also part of security. They might come up with that argument. But the best way is no security boats. Spend, just as you're going to spend on health, just as you're going to spend on education, just as you're going to spend on roads, spend, let it, get the money without any name, designation, security boot. Spend. So at the end of the day, when you're made to account, when it's time for, uh, 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 what do you call accountability, you will come out and explain how. The informants you talked about. And one, one thing I also want to say is that if you disclose if, if you cannot disclose the informant to the public, but in terms of proof, even if it's like what is done in the law courts, when you have a motion in Lema, you don't, you don't have it in open court. In terms of proof, I think those informants should be made known to those that are probing. It's like uh, uh, what you call the what this, uh, whistleblowers. Whistleblowers are actually not known to the public, but they are known to the authorities. So the information should be known to the authorities All right. that are probing, not the public necessarily, because to protect them against any form of attack. Upon Abon Kutaria, let's also look at the Nigerian Tribune, where uh, the caption here says, fuel price and new taxes among economic issues to shape 2022. Do you agree with this school of thoughts? Sorry, you said what? Fair price and new, well, right. new taxes. taxes to shape uh, the economic situation of 2022 or economic issues. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. The economic situation of the nation, well, but if we talk of the individual citizens, oh, definitely. Definitely. For the, for the worse, not for the better. Because if I, if I, if I ask why we pay taxes in this country, a civilized plan, you pay tax because you are not going to sink your ball. You pay taxes because you, 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 you have social amenities. Power supply is constant. You don't need to buy your generators. Your gas, you do. You have to even go to the filling station to get your gas. It's supplied and connected to the house. All you need to do is pay. That's like the prepared meter. Anytime you exhaust it, it's cut off. In Nigeria, why do you pay taxes? Where are the roads? Do you have this social security? You sink your borehole. You buy your plant. Practically everything is done by you and not by the government. The only thing the government owns is the state, the country. 
So why are you paying taxes? They don't even provide the basic amenities. They don't even provide it. So why are you paying taxes? Now you're going to increase the taxes. Even the present rate cannot be paid. People cannot afford it. You have this, you're a businessman, you run a company. For five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, you've not had a cover from that company. Yet every year you're being taxed. What are you paying the tax for? Where are you going to get the money from? You are talking of fuel, hike in fuel uh, uh, petroleum prices. How ridiculous. Now tomorrow they will come up with all kinds of stupid examples. I won't ask them. You say, oh, in social country, the price of petrol is this. In that country, as blessed as we are in terms of petroleum resources, that is number one. Why don't you say in social countries, this, they have social amenities, unfortunately we don't have. Why are you always comparing the negatives? Why not the positive? I tell people like that in Nigeria, what we practice is socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. The, the policies that are made by our government are policies against those at the bottom of the pecking order. They are the ones that suffer most. They say, if we have a government, not just a government, a government that is quite insensitive. As Buhari's government made it worse because it is rudderless, completely rudderless. It has no idea. Only floundering in the moral commission. Procedure. No idea what to So it's like a drowning man looking for what to save his life. Like a straw, like it will latch on to, 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 to be saved. That is what the government is doing. Why will you increase taxes right now? Considering the, eco the biting economic situation, extremely inflammatory economic situation, and you're talking of tax increase. Who is going to suffer? Because these government officials don't pay tax. What they do is they pay the system. From their salary, which means nothing. Their salaries mean nothing to them. They steal so much that they steal for generations of born. So they don't feel it. But the poor man feels it. They don't whether he likes it or not. The labor in the office, you're going to deduct his tax. You're increasing it. You're not increasing the salary. What is that? Then you're talking about the domino effect. What are the market prices? You're deducting because when you increase the taxes, for example, you include the tax of a man earning X amount, 10,000 naira. If the tax is 2,000 naira, it has been increased to 3,000 naira, hypothetically, to 3,000 naira. Meanwhile, the price of a cup of garden in the market has gone up. Price of tomatoes has gone up. Are you not appreciating that man financially? That's what you're doing. So rather than, I mean, already the problems, they are festering the problem, aggravating the problem. So I, it doesn't make sense to me. What about our refineries? What are they doing with the refineries? You talk about, this was the same government that said um, uh, there was no, what is it called, subsidy. This was the same government that accused the PDP government of subsidy, that the PDP government was using subsidy as an avenue to siphon money to steal. He came on board, acknowledged that yes, there was, there, there was subsidy. Now he said no more subsidy. What are the refineries that are six and a half years? What have you done? How can you export our petroleum product, refine it there outside, and test it to cost more? It will definitely cost more. So the government is completely, it, it doesn't have an idea of how to run a system. They are there to steal, sorry to say, they are thieves. Thieves in government. All right. You are fighting right. corruption. What corruption are you fighting? All right. Let, when the let, let's of move on. Uh, is peacefully. Yeah, let's move back. Uh, let's go to the Punch newspapers and then talk a little bit about security now. Um, it says here, food crisis uh, to worsen as bandits kill and kidnap 352 farmers in 12 months. Um, and also in Kaduna State, it says bandits raid Kaduna local governments and highway Q8 abduct 20 women and steal motorcycles also. And, um, you know, also talks about uh, two Baptist school students released after 189 days. Uh, so let's quickly also share um, your views on the insecurity challenges still battling or still, of course, to be deviling Nigeria currently. Uh, people are still being kidnapped and being killed. Um, communities are still being raided. And 352 farmers killed and kidnapped um, must also be very, very shocking. Banditry and um, other criminal activities, because they are have assumed apocalyptic dimension. I say this every day. 
And that is because we have a government that is complicitous. Now, you ask why. The government is not serious. It's a government that has trivialized life. Let us look at the former IS the general of police. The one before... Okay. The one before... Not, not, and not the one before this, this present one. I think the one before that one. When Mr. President ordered him as commander-in-chief to go to relocate to Bruno State, few months later, the president went to Bruno State and was told that the IG never spent a night in Bruno State. First, it was staggering that the president was not aware or feigned ignorance. He said, oh, I'm not aware. When I get back to Abuja, I'll investigate the allegation. That was the end of it. No disciplinary measure was taken. It served out his head. A, an ID disobeying, flagrantly disobeying the orders of the person to the detriment of Nigerians. That's the end of it. Let's come to the service chiefs, the Burakai group. They said so much amount was allocated for the purchase of arms and ammunition. Nothing. You are saying Nigeria. Nothing. Rather, the situation got worse. After they were relieved, six years after they were relieved, the deputy was rewarded with ambassador at that point. The president NSA accused the service chiefs. NSA, they, uh, their successors accused them, especially the uh, chief of defense staff, who said, they, there is nothing to show for the amount received by their predecessors. Mr. President still rewarded them with ambassadorial appointment in order to insulate them from prosecution. How else do you want to address the security situation? That's why I said the government is complicit. Let us go to Gumi. Gumi, who was the self-appointed uh, 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 mediator between the bandits and uh, the government was even daring Mr. President. He said, this will not end unless certain steps are taken. He said this after Mr. President promised that they were going to wipe out bandage. He came up the next day to say, it will not end until they are granted power. Gumi is moving freely. I dare you, Osa, to say that if the DSS will not come after you the next minute. That's why I say the government is complicit. You are talking of amnesty for bandits. How? You are talking, they said 7,000, 10,000, how ridiculous, bandits. Then they come up with placard with inscriptions written by people because those are illiterates telling them we renounce bandits. Are they going to renounce it without justice? And what did Kaduna State Governor say? He said he will never talk of forgiving any bandit. Because in the past he did. And they went back. These are recidivists. They went back. So they come into the society, graduate themselves, get more information, get more arms and ammunition, and go back. That's what they do. It is not as if they sincerely have judged their sin and penitently approach the government. No. This is a strategy. The heat is smart. Let's come. We've exhausted, uh, 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 our have been exhausted. Arms and ammunition have probably been exhausted and so Let's go, get some more, and go back. The government is aware of this. What has happened? Even the Katsuna State Governor, can I know that bandits have taken over? Bruno, they took over the local government. And we have a retired general as commander in chief. Oh, if you have love duty, you can. Infantil infantilize Nigeria. It's not possible. We know. The government is complicit. They don't know what they did. It's an ethnocentric war. And Mr. President being a full and man is protecting his brothers. Let the truth be told. Because look at what they did to our people. Everything red. Everything red. But look at what these bandits are doing. Oh, grand man. They are pleading. So, give God, uh, what's his name, uh, 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 in a 
drive the camel. Jesus, Pilot, is to drag him. And let's see. The bandage. Oh, yes. Let's drag the man there. Who are you deceiving? That's why I say the government is also complicit. Because these generals who are there to fight this war, to obtain the situation, are being honored for doing nothing. For even killing, because they gave them money to buy answers. They just refused to buy the answers. So what have you done? You're part of the murderers. That's what you are. Okay, um, and you're holding them, rewarding them for mediocrity. Open up on for, for, for the want of time, uh, let's just see if we can quickly share your thoughts on, um, I mean, on the Daily Independent, there are several um, interesting caption here. But uh, let, let's look at this one. Buhari's non-supervision of military activities affecting insurgency result. And that's what you have there. And also, uh, you know, you can also add that with the fact that terrorists mounting roadblocks amount to two sovereignties in Nigeria. This is according to the MBF. And they just amplified what, 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 what I said, or will I say I amplified what they said since the, uh, 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 the paper was uh, published before, before this interview. There is no supervision of military activities affecting the insurgency results. I mentioned the issue of the former Inspector General of Police. I mentioned the issue of uh, the Burakai and, uh, and his colleagues. So how else I can explain it? That explains Lucy, completely Lucy. It's not interested. The man, if the man does not even know what is happening in this country. Anytime you talk, he tells you, I'm not aware. You remember, you know this, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. I'm not aware. So what do you expect? And that is the truth. It's either it's a case of inertia or a case of complicity. And I would prefer the latter, complicity. Because of those involved. Because you see, you, you don't, you don't cherry pick in the administration of justice. The tempest of justice must not blow people. What is good for the good is also good for the kind. The same way you are approaching the Idoos matter, the same way you are approaching the IFOB matter should be the same treatment for these bandits. Should be the same. But no, there's discrimination. Real yeah. discrimination. Well, Mr. Mr. Inkotaria, uh, to be it has, fair... It has, it has it well, to be fair, Mr. Inkotaria, um, there's, you know, of course, every now and then reports of bandits being killed, you know, uh, 10, 8, you know, sometimes, you know, even dozens. Um, you know, so can we, you know, still say that the government is not, you know, hitting them hard? Um, you know, the same way, of course, uh, the government is addressing Sunday Boho, who, of course, is, you know, doesn't seem to be going to be I will commend the President's service chiefs. There is um, a remarkable difference in terms of methodology, modus operandi. I'll commend the President's service chiefs. However, they make a very bad situation. A situation that was exacerbated by their predecessors. And I tell you, these very commanders, yes, we agree. Once in a while, even the, the God has his enemy. And the devil has friends. Once in a while, they read. And I don't think, if you ask Mr. President, what really happened in any particular in that way, probably the chief of defense staff is upset. He's not a full animal. He's probably upset. And it's kind of this in Suomotu. Not as if Mr. President is interested. Because you have the former service chiefs, and things got worse under them. Money is appropriated. We are misused and bezeled. If you're serious, you would have investigated them and not only watched them with ambassadorial appointments. That is the problem. And that's why people infuse the sincerity of the government in addressing this issue, in containing banditry. How can we reward those criminals? I can call them criminals because the successors uh, uh, accuse them of fraud. But of course, you know, of you know that they need to be tried. You know, I mean, everyone is. I know that the argument is coming. Definitely. Excuse me, excuse me, Rashi. If I am putting you to court, and I say. Messi stole my one millionaire. I've already called you a thief. You will go to court for a rebuttal to play on the music. 
and God to give a judgment. That's how it's done, isn't it? So I am now saying they are criminals. Let them go to court to say, no, they are not criminals. You know, there has to be an allegation for an action to take place. So I am now saying they are criminals. And that's an Let allegation? Let them go to court to say, no, they are not criminals. That's an but allegation. But I'm concerned. That's what I'm saying. It's an allegation. I'm not, I'm not, that's an allegation. That's to me. That's my opinion. That's my view. It is also within their rights. It's also within their power to go to court to say, no, we are not. You call us criminals. Then the judgment will be passed. And the world will know who is saying the truth or not. Because the NS itself came out to say that they embezzled the funds. The assassins came out to say they embezzled the funds. How else do you explain it? They have not reacted. There is not a bottle on their side from them. What does that mean? What does silence mean? Admission of facts. Because they have not reacted. They said nothing. Oh. Because they know that you they respond. Well, it's, it's, it's still, I mean, to be honest, you know, um, Sankotar, I think we have one more story to, sh you know, that we can throw at you. Um, but, you know, regardless of how silent they are, it's still left for the Nigerian government to audit this, you know, the, audit the um, funds that have been paid to the that's army. Yeah, that, and if, they, if the Nigerian government right. fails to do so, um, then it's, the onus is left for the Nigerian government. It's the Nigerian government that is failing, not these persons who have been, you know, accused. No, 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 no. The Nigerian government is abdicating its responsibility. I agree with you. But that does not exonerate this character. Well, it is a crime. It's not statute back. The next government can come up and decide to prosecute. It's a crime. Well, what's the so, those? The Nigerian government, yes, repudiation of obligation. But then that does not mean that this person, they have been accused by their own, by the same government, their successors and the NSC. Not by any and any person, not by even Obnabu and Kodara. Obnabu and Kodara is only amplifying the allegations, the activities. Oh, wow. That's what it is. So and, and the Nigerian government, if the Nigerian government fails, does not mean they have been exonerated. They are guilty until they say, no, they are not guilty. Or sometimes I say you're a thief and they keep quiet. The world will say you're a thief. That's the truth. If you're silent, then the world will say that it is true. That's how science is not talking. That's how science is not talking. Because if you're not, you clear the air. And that's why most Nigerians are paid. The government does not belong to any particular the government does not belong to any particular person. You're holding it in trust. So everybody has the right to talk. That's why they say freedom of expression. You have the right to talk. It's my money. It's my it is my patrimony. It's not his money. We talk to tax here. The tax that we pay is from my pocket. It's from your pocket. That's your debt. That's to be your paying tax. So I will not you know you won't account for it. It's my money. Yeah, well. That's not the question of why Mr. President because Mr. President is going to be sued. Um. I thought it's going to be sued. Mr. Gotari. So we all have the right to address the issue and express. If my expression goes beyond the law, the law courts are there. Let's go and fight it out. That's why you have the law courts. All right. Um, uh, let, let's let, let's bring up something else, <laughs> Ms. Angotai. Let's move away from the service chiefs and uh, the likes. Let's let's look at something on the Nigerian Tribune, top left corner. It's it's saying, you know, it's asking, is Nigeria ready for global energy transition by 2025? I'm sure we know the answer to this, um, but I, I want you to also respond um, and also. You know, ask, you know, another question I'll be asking with regards to this is, should this even be a part of our conversation now um, as a country? If the, the world is moving on to a totally different, you know, um, energy source, um, and there's an energy transition that is expected in 2025, is, should Nigeria even be a part of that conversation? Well, yes, in the sense that it's also a country. You know, you have 100 people in a class. Out of the 100, maybe just 15 or 20 of them are the serious students. Others have joined the bank world. That's what we do. So I don't really think we should even waste our time, double the time discussing what is the obvious. This is a country that does not even know what 2022 December holds for itself. It has no plan. So what are we talking about? Are we ready? Are we ready for anything? Everything in Nigeria comes by surprise. Even if there's an attack tomorrow, it's by surprise. 
Anything in this country is by chance. If we succeed, it's a fluke. Because it's a thing we are created to pay. That is the plan. Millennium Development Goals. Oh, this goes. Oh, that goes. What has happened? We keep shifting the dates. Yeah, but, but President so Mohamed, I, President Mohamed Bari has been attending, you know, certain conferences across the world. Oh, God of Israel! I just told you, some persons are just there to join the bandwagon. I said, what are they saying? What impact has it been? Was it the that the what is the this former man, American president? What is the thing? This man that wanted to truncate the democracy, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, called a sleeping president. Was it the president called a sleeping president? What are we talking about? What, what, what is the okay, answer? What are really the impact of his judges? What? The American was because he's trying to make up for what he did not enjoy when he was head of state. So this is an opportunity. So I just want even when you're going to sign the uh, external advice a minister, you travel. Even when you're going to sign the you travel. That's all. That's the number of guys is being, is, is being in Asso Rock to administer. He's always traveling, always traveling. Electoral bill, he traveled. This, he traveled. If there is something to travel for, medical tourism. Medical tourism. And look at Asura. Why should the president leave Asura? When his wife complained, and all the money is voted, it's being uh, embezzled. People said, oh, why? But look at Asura. His president, is that not a shame that your president is giving your country? Meanwhile, you have Asura in it. Forget every other thing. Not a quick, no middle, according to her, you don't even have middle. And the president is traveling. You can imagine the forest. How much you spend? So what are we talking about? He's just traveling. He's trying to catch up for what he lost because Bavamila did not allow him to enjoy it. But you know that some of these travels, I mean, it's still part of, you know, the presidential functions. I mean, this is some meetings I that the president would have to attend to. Question. I ask a simple question. What are the benefits? What are the benefits? How have the travels positively affected Nigeria and Nigeria? I want one, only one. Only one. How? You just want to feel among that's all. Uh, uh, Biden is going, I'm also going. Uh, 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 France President, uh, 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 then additional will come ahead. Uh, Mr. President, I'll tell, you, tell, me, tell, me, tell me the impact of one. Go to America and ask them, you get the impact. Go to France, have the impact. Go to Ghana, you have the impact. There's always an improvement. Tell me, mention one. Mention one in my Nigeria. Mr. Inkotara. You, you are looking at me. You are looking at me now. <laughs> Mr. Because you also know, you also know that your situation yesterday is definitely better than this morning. But God forbid it will change. <laughs> Open up with Inkotaria. Thank you very much for yeah. joining us this morning. We truly enjoy speaking with you. Thank you. And we want to wish you, you a you. very, Thank very you. beautiful day ahead. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, pretty interesting uh, conversation this morning. We'll uh, take a short break and, of course, uh, share with you what happened on this day in history. We're going to be talking a little bit about Aretha Franklin, the legend. And then right after that, our first major conversation for today moves to Burno State. We'll be back.